Welcome to Blandis Place and our YouTube channel, where we promote all natural way of living and cooking. Today's recipe is a traditional beef and barley soup. As soon as the weather changes, um, I have a need to put the big pot of soup on a stove. The cold weather calls for hearty soups, and one of our favorites is barley and beef, or beef and barley. So uh, today I'm just going to show you my variation. Uh, obviously, there's a plenty of space to change the recipe here and there, but I'm going to show you how I make my bar beef and barley and see if you like it. So maybe you too will try. Good beef broth is the key. And to get both uh, good meat and the good broth, I'm going with these beef shanks. Ideally, if we were to cook this meat, um, I wish I had a, a bigger pot that is a part with bigger bottom so that I could cook these just the way they are. And then um, after they're uh, softened and, and cooked thoroughly, I could just take the meat apart and add it to the soup. But since our pot has a smaller bottom, I'm gonna go ahead and separate some of these pieces. Not just that I'm going to remove the meat, I'm also going to try to get rid of some of these membranes on side. You see, it would be good to get rid of that as well. Chop it into small pieces like this and cook it slowly. I'm also going to go ahead and include the bone. I'm going to throw the bone in and all this good marrow so that we can have a nice and rich broth. So we are starting with a cup of olive oil, two medium heads of onion. Three sticks of celery. I also have a little bit of celery root in here and about four to five cloves of chopped garlic. Vegetables look beautiful and I don't know if you can see it, but they are nice and golden brown and this is a good time to start adding meat. Okay, so we have all the meat inside, including the bone part. And now it's, uh, um, it's time to simmer the meat. The now, beef shanks are delicious, but they have to be cooked properly or otherwise they will be tough. Cooking them too fast could be, I could turn them to be tough. So before we add anything else, we want to make sure the meat is almost all the way cooked because um, it really needs that little extra time and little extra care because it will make a huge difference on the end when you serve your soup. So with that said, we want to simmer the meat. We're not frying it, we're simmering it meaning that at any point you do have to have a certain amount of moisture in the pot. So this right now looks perfect. You see we have some fluids and I will be checking periodically on the pot to make sure that we maintain this amount of fluids so the meat is um, uh, cooked with steam and with the fire itself. So while that's happening, I'm gonna add a tablespoon of salt this is a himalayan salt and i'm gonna add a teaspoon of black pepper now we are gonna assess flavors towards the end but for right now we have pepper and salt and i'm gonna add four bay leaves i'm gonna mix it all in and then i'm gonna reduce the fire to medium low uh, just enough so that we have that little simmer coming from the bottom and then I'm going to let the meat cook slowly. While meat is simmering, I'm going to prepare and pre-cut one medium butternut squash. This um, has been on the stove for a good 40 minutes, almost an hour, on a nice and steady simmer with uh, slowly adding some water. Meat is uh, nice and soft right now, so the next step is to add our squash and we're gonna cook this for just a little bit because we don't want to overcook it and five minutes into cooking I'm gonna add barley and pour warm broth over it over it and let it simmer once again Okay, now it's time to add barley, and I'm adding about a cup and a half of barley along with a teaspoon of paprika. You can use smoked or Hungarian, either way it would be good. Now, all that's left to do is to add broth. Make sure 
broth is preheated and if you can use a beef broth that would be better i didn't have it so i'm going with the chicken broth so make sure that you add broth and after that we're going to add once okra the soup is done the barley will continue to absorb the moisture so we're going to have this thick stew almost like so what i want to do is add some more water so far we have uh, 13 cups of water in here and i'm going to go ahead and add probably three more and then I will just finish up soup with some additional spices, some green onions, parsley, um, uh, garlic, and some okra. About six or seven minutes prior to finishing your soup, you wanna add okra. Okra, like barley, will also enhance the broth. It will make it thicker. Uh, okra has this uh, gooey texture and uh, it's gonna make the soup extra creamy. Okay, so let's finish it. Um, the last thing to add would be extra salt, extra pepper, or stuff for your taste, uh, basic spices. And here I have a, um, a nice small bunch of fresh parsley and a bunch of uh, green onions. So I'm gonna add that. Also, I'm gonna throw in just a little bit of this chili paste, just for the spice optional and uh, to add a little bit of acid, uh, acid to the soup I'm gonna add just a little bit of sriracha I can't wait to try it uh, ideally you want to let the soup uh, cook chill for maybe or just to cool off a little bit maybe 15-20 minutes but I'm hungry and anxious to try it and a slice of this homemade pumpkin sourdough. And now you are ready to enjoy it. Not just today, but for weeks to come, because this soup will freeze well. Hearty meals like these should never go out of style, and I'm on a mission to bring these old recipes back to life and back in style. So for all of you who love to cook, this is a great opportunity to do something nice for your neighbors or people in your neighborhood who, need, who could use a bowl of soup or a homemade dish. So if you feel blessed that you have enough food in your home and you're already investing time in cooking, make a little extra and share it. This could make somebody's day and this is a, a perfect way to show people around you that you care. Thank you all for watching and thank you to all of our subscribers. My name is Vlada Vladik. I'm a founder of a charitable organization called Vlada Seeds of Life, whose mission is to help reconnect American families and communities. Our television program called Cooking and Kids is currently airing in over 40 states and on 270 television stations. To find out more, please visit vladav.com.